Good day, shalom and shalom, and welcome to yet another funky daily uh, Bible commentation. Today we dive into Judith 8. So in Judith 8, we learn about Judith, the daughter of Mirai, who was a widow for three years and four months after her husband Manassas died during the barley harvest. Manassas died in Bethulia. Manassas died in Bethulia when the heat overcame him while he was overseeing the workers in the field. They buried him between Dotham and Balamo alongside his ancestors. During her widowhood, Judith lived a life of devotion and fasting, wearing sackcloth and widow's appeal. She fasted continuously, except on the eaves of the Sabbaths. The Sabbaths themselves, the eaves of the new moons, the new moons, and the feasts, and the solemn days of the house of Israel, she was known for her piety and fear of God. Judith, upon hearing the troubled news of Ozias, the governor, had sworn to deliver the city of the Assyrians within five days due to the severe shortage of water. Was greatly concerned, she decided to take actions and sent her waiting woman, who was in charge of her affairs, to summon Ozias, Shabri, Shami, and the elders of the city. When they arrived, Judith chastised them for making an oath between God and themselves to, to, to surrender the city to the Assyrians. She questioned her wisdom and warned against tempting God by breaking such an oath. She argued that they could not understand God's mind or purpose, and therefore they should not provoke his anger. Judith encouraged them to trust in the Lord's timing, reminded them that God was not swayed by threats like humans, and could choose to help or defend them whenever he wished. She implored them not to limit God's plans, emphasizing that God was not uh, to be tested or threatened as they had done. She pointed out that, unlike previous generations, they did not worship gods made by human hands, but relied solely on the Lord God. Their, ancestor, at their ancestors had suffered greatly for turning away from God, but they had remained faithful, so they trusted that God would not abandon them. If they surrendered and were taken captive, Judith warned that all of Judea would be laid to waste. The sanctuary would be de desecrated and the people would become an offense and a reproach to their captors. Their servitude would bring no favor, but rather dishonor upon them. Judith urged them to set an example for their brethren and to give thanks to the Lord as he was testing them, not taking vengeance as he had done with their forefathers. Ozias acknowledged Judith's wisdom and acknowledged that the people were thirsty, compelling them to make the oath they had sworn. He asked Judith to pray for rain, and she agreed with a plan to reveal her intentions after her actions were completed. The elders returned to their posts, and Judith prepared to take action to save her city and people. So let us read Judith 8 in the KJV, verse 1. <clears throat> now at the time Judith heard thereof, which was the daughter of Mirai, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Ozeel, and the son of Alkia, the sons of Anan Ananias, the son of Ananias, the son of uh, Gideon, <laughs> with G-E-D-E-O-N, it's so close to my name, Gideon, the son of Raphaim, the son of Akthio, the son of Elu, the son of Aliab, the son of Nathaniel, my middle name, the son of Samuel, the son of Saladiel, the son of Israel, Israel. And Manassas was her husband, and the tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, and heat came upon his head, and fell on his bed, and died in the city of Bethulia, and they buried him with feathers in the field between Dothiam and Balamo. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months, and she made her tent upon the top of her house, and put on sackcloth upon her loins, and wear her widow's apparel. Verse 6, And she feasted all the days of her widowhood, 
save the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths, and the eaves of the new moons, and the new moons and the feasts, and the solemn days of the house of Israel. And she was also a good countenance, a very beautiful to behold. And her husband Manasseh had left her gold and silver and men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands, and she remained upon them. Verse 8, And there was none that gave her an ill word, ere she feared God greatly. <coughs> Woo! Verse 9, And now when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words of Isaiah and had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. Then she sent her waiting woman and had the government of all things that she had to call Uzziah, Shabri, and Shami, the ancients of the city. And they came unto her, and she said unto them, Hear me now, O ye governors and inhabitants of Bethulia, for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right. Touching this oath which ye made and pronounced between God and you, and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within the days the Lord to turn to help you. And now who are ye that have tempted God on this day, and stand instead of God among the children of men? And now try the Lord Almighty, but ye shall never know anything. For ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can ye perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can ye search out God that hath made all these things, and know his mind, or comprehend his purpose? Nay, ye brethren, provoked not the Lord our God to anger. For if ye, uh, for if he will not help us within five days... He hath power to defend us when he will, even day, uh, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God, for God is not as man that he may be threatened. Neither is he as the Son of Man that he should be wavering. Therefore let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voice if it please him. For there arose none in our age, neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe, nor family, nor people, nor city among us, which God, which worship gods made with hands, as hath bef been aforetime. For the which cause our fathers, which given to the sword, and for spoil, and had a great fall before our enemies, but we know none other God. Therefore we trust that he will not despise us, nor any of our nation. For if we be taken so, all Judea shall lie waste, and our sanctuary shall be spoiled, and he will require the profanity thereof at our mouth. And the slaughter of our brethren, and the captivity of the country, and the desolation of our inheritance will he turn upon our head among the Gentiles, wheresoever we shall be in bondage, and we shall be in offense, and a reproach to all them that possess us. For our servitude shall not be dedicated to favor, but the Lord our God shall turn it to dishonor. Verse 24, Now therefore, our brethren, let us shew an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend upon us, and the sanctuary of the house, and the altar rest upon us. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob, in Mesopotamia, Syria, when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. For he hath not tried us in the fire, as he did them, for the examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance upon us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him, to admonish them. Then said Ozias to her, All that thou hast spoken, and thou spoken with a good heart, and there is none that may gainsay thy words. For this is not the first day wherein the wisdom is manifested, but from the beginning of the days of all the people have known thy understanding, because this disposition of thine heart is good. Verse 30, But the people were very thirsty, and compelled us to do unto them as we have spoken, and bring an oath upon ourselves, which we will not break. Therefore now pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman, and thou and the Lord will send us rain to fill our cisterns, and we shall faint no more. Then said Judith unto them, 
Hear me, and I will do a thing which shall go throughout all generations to the children of our nations. Ye shall stand this night in the gate, and I will go forth uh, with my waiting woman. And within the days that ye have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, the Lord will visit Israel by thine hand. But inquire not ye my acts, for I will declare unto you till the things be finished that I do. Then said Ozias and the princess unto her, Go in peace, and the Lord God before thee, to take vengeance on our enemies. So they turned, returned from the tent, and went to their to their wards. Let us move into prayer. Heavenly Father, we be, we come before you in times of hardship and uncertainty, just as Judith did when she heard of the desire situation facing her people. She was a woman of faith and wisdom, and she sought your guidance and help when her people were in great need. Lord, we too face challenges and difficulties in our lives. Sometimes it seems like there is no way out, and we are surrounded by adversity. Like Judith, we turn to you for guidance and strength. We pray for your wisdom, O Lord, to make right decisions and to take the right actions in the face of adversity, just as Judith reminded the leaders of Bethulia not to provoke you to anger, help us to remain faithful and trust in your divine plan. We acknowledge that you are the ultimate source of help and salvation. We place our trust in you, knowing that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Just as Judith waited for your divine intervention, help us to patiently wait for you in timing and your help in our lives. Lord, as we face challenges, may we remember the examples of faith and courage from those who have gone before us. Strengthen our faith and help us to be a people of good character, just as Judith was known for her wisdom and godliness. We ask for your guidance and protection, just as Judas went forth with a plan to save her people. Grant us the strength and courage to face our challenges, knowing that you are with us. In the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. So let us move into finish with a praise and worship song based on Judith 8. And this is titled, Judith's Prayer of Wisdom. In Bethulia's land, a, window, a widow she stood, Judith, a noble lineage, heart pure and good. Her husband Manassas had passed away in the barley harvest a fateful day. Though trials and years, she bore her grief, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. She fasted through the days except for a few, the eaves of the Sabbath, the new moon she, sh she knew. And the feasts and solemn days of Israel's grace, in God's presence she sought solace. Though trials and years she bore her grief, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. Judith was known for her grace and her face. Manassas had left her riches a blessed embrace. Gold, silver, uh, servants, lands, and her beauty fair. Yet her true treasure was her trust in prayer. Though trials and years, she bore her grief, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. When she heard of the people's desperate plight, lack of water, despair looming, a perilous fight, Ozias' oath to the Assyrians stirred her heart. She knew it was time to play her part. Though trials and years, she bore her grief, her faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. With righteous anger, she spoke to the wise. Who are you to tempt God with such unwise ties? You cannot fathom his heart or his ways. Do not provoke him in these desperate days. Though trials and years, she bore her grief, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, and her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. In Judah's plea for patient, a counsel of grace, to trust in God's timing in this desperate place. She knew the faithlessness could not lead to despair, but in God's embrace, there was hope in the air. Through her trials and years, she bore her grief, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. She warned of the consequences, the cost of her choice, to forsake the Lord's guidance, to stifle his voice. For all Judea's sins in their history's tale, she feared of God's judgment, a nation's travail. 
Through trials and years, she bore her grief, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong, in prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. Judith's wisdom resonated with her, her, uh, her words found their place. Ozias and the leaders, they saw God's grace. They left her with blessings to carry her through. In faith, she prepared for what God would do. Through trials and years, she bore the grief, a, faith, a, heart, a faithful heart seeking God's relief. She donned the widow's attire, her heart stayed strong. In prayer and fasting, her faith lifelong. Judith, a woman of faith, strength and grace, prepared to embark on her perilous, perilous chase. For God's deliverance, she would stand with courage and faith. She'd save, uh, she'd save her land. I would say God saved her land. Shalom and shalom until next time. May God keep you and bless you. Bye for now.